All right, in three, two, one. Hey, good morning, everybody. Today is February 18th, 2019. This is your Monday motivation. Hope you all got a chance to catch out the uh, Sunday motivation with my daughter. Um, we were having a little bit of fun yesterday. Anyway, I wanted to let you all know that it is President's Day today. However, uh, most people got to work um, today. First thing you should have done, made your bed in the morning. Why do we make our bed in the morning? Now, this came from a, uh, a Navy person, okay? And they wrote a book on making your bed every morning. Now, why do we make our bed every morning? Whoopsie. <laughs> why do we make our bed every morning? We make our bed so we have one accomplishment throughout the entire day that shows that we did something that we can accomplish. Now... The uh, person was a Navy SEAL and in, in charge of SEAL Team 6, and he always says, you know, making your bed. That's the reason why military guys are always have to make their bed every morning, no matter what. It doesn't matter what time we get up, what we do, where we're at. Making our bed is always the number one thing. Now, why do you want to make your bed this morning? If you haven't made your bed yet, go make it. <laughs> Even if you take off work, go home and take your bed. you got to have one accomplishment for the day. Now, before I get any further, I want you to know right off the bat, you're important. You're very important. You're important, and you're important. And what's nice is you're important. The reason why I'm saying this is it's Monday. Go out there today. Get energized. Love the day. You know, love your neighbor. Have, treat everybody with kindness. But now, today we're going to go over communication. Why is communication so important? Everything we do in life deals with communication. If you go around people that celebrate you, you're going to notice that they want to know about you. They want to know how your day is. They want to know what's going on. And what you're going to do is you're going to want to know how their day is going also. OK, you're going to want to know everything about them. You're going to want to know, you know, just because when we celebrate people, we like to know about it. Even if we don't understand. Think about parents for a minute. OK, I want you to think about your parents for a minute while we're getting motivated. OK, they want to know about you, but they don't always understand what's going on. They don't even try to understand what's going on. They just want to know about what's going on in your life, how you're doing it. And the older we get, you know, the more confused they may be. But they're going to basically stand behind us and proud at all times. I was watching a thing on uh, Gunny, Gunny, the Gunny, okay? If you all know about the Gunny in the Marine Corps, okay? It was Gunnery Sergeant Hartman. Um, uh, he basically, his family didn't really believe in his uh, movie career, okay? However, after they they got a private screening of Full Metal Jacket. Now, this has nothing to do with Marines or anything else, but it does show you how parents may not always understand what we go through, but when they finally see what we do, you know, they have they, they all of a sudden then be, they have pride. See, the thing about a parent is we want what's best for our children no matter what happens. And the reason why sometimes we can be strict, we can be the, the party of no, is because we want to make sure that our children are always successful. The ones we love are always successful. You know, we always want to make sure they're doing what's right for the right reasons in the right way and not for just what's right now. And uh, Gunnery Sergeant Hartman, um, Lee... Um, our, our, um, Ernie Lee, I forgot his last name. Give me a second. I'm having a brain fart right now. I've been so busy this morning. But needless to say, his family didn't believe him until they watched the movie of Full Metal Jacket. Since then, he went on and check it, uh, checks it, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, stuff like that. Now, why is that important? Because still, every single morning, he made his bed. Every single morning, he never gave up on himself. He basically always had the energy. His wife was a very shy person. Um, and she really didn't like the spotlight, and so we never heard too much from her. But she would always say that he always loved the spotlight, he always loved people, and always put vets and everybody first. But every morning he made his bed. Every morning he had that motivation in his skills. He'd find and seek out things with motivation. Get rid of the negative people in his life. Get rid of the news and all that nasty stuff. Because later on you'd find out that he was blacklisted from Hollywood because of his political viewpoints. But he never let it get in his way of doing what was right for the veterans and what was right for kids and what was right, you know, not what's right now. Today, when you go out there, know this. The first thing you got to understand is no one can control how you feel but you, okay? Nobody can sit there and tell you what to do or how to do it except you. So, you know, you can be kind to somebody. That doesn't mean they have to be kind back. But you don't have to let their reaction back at you affect how you treat others. In other words, if somebody's not kind to you, so what? Kill them with kindness. You heard that so many times. Kill them with kindness. Kill them with respect. Kill them with love. You know what? I was in the Marine Corps, several guys that they just, they were so depressed. They were just so miserable with their own life that they didn't care who was nice to them or not, but they treated people like crap. So you know what the fun thing to do is? We kill them with kindness, okay? Because they're great people. 
Now, when you go out there in today's everyday world, people may be so busy, they may not be nice back. Doesn't mean they're not nice people. They may just have a lot going on. Shake their hand anyway. Give them a hug anyway. You know, tell them that they matter anyway because we don't know what they're going through. Now, your motivation today should be whatever you came up with yesterday during the weekend so you could apply it this week. Quit relying on the weekend. That, that That's only three Friday, Saturday, Sunday, technically only two days, but then you start getting it boiled down. You only have one day. Why don't you start living for the week instead of the weekend? Start living for when your kids get off school to have fun. You know, Start doing things at home during the week. I remember when my mom was alive, we used to always sit down. Didn't matter day or night. We'd always sit down for meals, period. Nothing else was allowed. We'd sit down, all four of us. I had my seat. My sister had her seat. My dad had his seat. My mom had her seat. We always sat down for meals no matter what, and we communicated with each other. We talked with each other. Everybody had their time, okay? And to me, those are the times I remember, even after my mom died of cancer, they're saying, those are times that I remember. But she basically forced us to sit down and have a meal together, and those are the times I remember more than anything else. Whenever Gracie and I eat or whenever I do something like that, I turn off everything. In fact, over the weekend, for the first time, somebody couldn't get a hold of me. There was a couple people couldn't get a hold of me over the weekend because I was spending time with my daughter and we were having supper and I left the phones and all communication in my room on the chargers. People think because they see me like this, I'm always... No, 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 no. What you see is a few minutes of my day to make sure that you understand that you matter. I do this for you. Now, with my daughter, though, I do shut it all down. I make sure that there is no communications going on whatsoever except between her and I so I know what's going on in her life. I can ask her questions. And sometimes she gets like me when I was with my grandma. She gets avoidance, uh, not because of anything bad. It's just, oh, it went great. I'd always come back home from school. And my grandma would say, hey, Jeff, how was your day at school? Oh, great. Oh, it was good. But she wanted a full explanation. So she coaxed full explanations out of me. So what I'm saying is your motivation today should be the fact that you accomplished something this morning, you're going to accomplish something later, and that you just treat people awesome. That should be enough motivation to get you through every single day because not only do you matter, but you got to let others know they matter too. Whether or not how they treat you, that does not matter. What matters is what you do. Okay, We're so focused on what everybody else says, thinks, or does that we forget ourselves. We forget that it starts with us. If we don't do it, then nobody else is going to do it. We're so worried about what other people are doing that we come up with this theory that says, do as I say, not as I do. One of the things I've hated worse in life, and when I get up on stage and when I speak to people and when I talk to people and everything else, is I do it myself. The reason why is because I don't count on other people to get it done. Now, my team, I count on them. But I also would never ask them to do anything that I myself am not willing to do or have not already done in the Marine Corps, okay? <clears throat> there is a reason why we start out at private or PFC in the Marine Corps because we're willing, we have to learn everybody's jobs. We have to learn what everybody's doing because we can't rely on do as I say, not as I do. And in the military, when you see like admin people or other people that don't know your specialty or know your field and they never do it, but they go tell you to do something, that is outside your specialty, you kind of look at them like, really? Are you willing? They're not willing to do it. And so the person that goes and does it really does a half job. They don't really go do the job. But if someone's gone ahead of them, like the gunnery sergeants, the first sergeants, the staff sergeants, um, the sergeants, the NCOs, the corporals, okay, um, the lance corporals. Whoops, that king keeps falling. I apologize, everybody. Anyway, the reason why they do it is because they're willing to get it done. Well, guess what? If they've already done it, we can't half, we can't do half of it. The reason why is because they know how to do it. So when you're out there today, don't just go on well half. Go heavy. Go heavy all day long. It's like a workout. Workouts are not fun. Okay, anybody says, oh, I love the... Yeah, yeah, no, you don't, honestly. You really don't. You do it because you want to get bigger. You do it because you got a goal. You don't do it because, oh, it feels great, because it doesn't. It's like running a marathon. It doesn't feel good the first five miles, but then you get that runner's high at the next 10. You're like, okay, I'm doing this. I'm doing this because you're out of breath. Your body's hurting. Well, guess what? When you get done, you're so proud that you did it and you're honored you did it. But then you get that runner's high after a while. Some people never run long enough to ever get a runner's high. A runner's high doesn't mean that it feels great and that you can't feel everything in your body. It just means you're finally in that pace that you're comfortable with, that you, you can keep pushing no matter what. And at the very end, you can push even harder. That's what it's all about. It's all about what goes on in your heart and your brain. Believe it or not, you can get through any situation with just enough obstacles in your path that you figure out all the obstacles that you get to the finish line. 
Communication is the key to everything, though. You need to talk with friends. You need to talk with family. You need to open up communications with your husbands and your wives and your girlfriends and your boyfriends and your kids. Communication is the most important thing you'll ever be able to do. And today's motivational stuff is over communication. When I sat down for supper with my mom and everything else, I got to learn what was going on in my dad's life, my mom's life, my sister's life. You know, and they got to, well, I was young at the time. They already knew what was going on in my life, but I told them anyway. You see, we have neglected the people around us out of fear we may be disturbing them or out of fear that may, they may actually tell us, okay? Our jo but the thing about it is you need to talk to people. You need to have a good communication with people because you know what? Maybe they're going through something and you can save their life. I've had so many friends commit suicide and the one thing I found out, the reason why they were committing suicide and the reason why they did it, almost everybody had one thing in common. Not a single one of them had communication skills. Okay, that thing's just driving me crazy. Not a single one of them had communication skills. And if they would have had communication skills, maybe they would have let us know that, hey, they're hurting on the inside. We just don't know it. And the people that say, oh, they'll reach out. Don't worry, they'll reach out. They'll reach out. No, they won't. Stop saying that. That is false. They will not reach out. They will not sit there, and if there is a problem, sit there and tell us what's going on. They will not do that. You need to reach out to them, and if they don't find a way, or maybe they will reach out, but they need to know that you're going to listen. I'm sorry, but if you're treating people like crap, no one's going to sit there and reach out to you. If your whole goal is to go out and get drunk and not listen to your friends, they're not going to listen to you. Your whole goal is to go out and get high, but you could care less about what everybody else is doing, then you're right. And then all of a sudden, you're like, I wonder why they did that. They didn't tell me anything. Well, they didn't tell you anything because you weren't willing to listen to them. You weren't willing to open up the two ears on your head and be like, hey, what's going on? Okay? And then when they did tell you, you took them as a joke. Don't do that. And don't take your kids as a joke. Remember, their playtime is like your work time. That is their job. Their job is to play. Kids going to school, that is their job. Just like your job is to work and bring in money. Okay? So remember this. Communication is key. You must talk to your kids. You must talk to your domestic partners. You must talk to your husbands, your wives, your girlfriends. You got to talk back and forth. Why? Because their jobs is just as important as your job. And if you want them to listen to you, you better sure as heck listen to them. And if you're like, oh, well, you know, they'll reach out. No, they won't reach out. If you are so closed down, they will not reach out to you. Now, the reason why I say this and the reason why I go with this every single day is it starts from my military brethren, okay? All the, the men and women in military, doesn't matter what branch, they are seeking people to talk to. They need people to talk to, okay? And the reason why I do these every single day is because I'm trying to get this across to you. They're not going to reach out to you. And if you're, if you're somebody that tolerates people but doesn't celebrate people, they're not going to reach out to you. And then all of a sudden you come across and you're like, oh, man, I was always there, but they didn't. No, it's because you closed down. The reason why they never came to you is because you never opened yourself up for them to communicate with you. They will listen to you as much as you'll listen to them. You gotta ask questions. You gotta figure out a way. You gotta say please and thank you. You gotta reach your hand out in kindness, okay? I, years ago, had a depression problem because I was going through so much. And you know what's funny is, I locked myself away and not everybody's like, ah, oh, well, if he needed anything, he'll come to me. No, those aren't my friends. And I never thought of them as my friends. Yet, they were all willing to take what I had. I call them bottom feeders. And they're still out there today. I'm not gonna tell you who they are. But they never once asked me, are you okay? All they wanted was what I could give them but they never wanted to reach out to me to see what they could do to help me. And all they had to do was listen. And all they had to do was talk to me. Because believe it or not, communication also means that even though they're talking to you, they want to listen to you also because they want to know about your problems in life. They want to know who you are. They want to know everything about you. And the best motivation is this, is when all of a sudden you realize you have friends that care about you, never gossip about you. Friends that you can basically turn drama off and they'll just talk about positive stuff every day. I tell people all the time, you're losing your Facebook page. You're getting rid of your Facebook page because all negative people. Have you ever thought it might be you being negative? It doesn't matter if you get rid of your Facebook, your Google, your Instagram or anything else. It's because you've been so negative that people are talking negative back. What if you would take all the negative stuff off and just put positive, literally in your head. Oh, I'm going to put negative. Instead, write, I love you. Instead, write, you matter. Instead, write, you are the best thing that's ever happened. What if you were to do that instead of, oh, I'm going to get rid of Facebook? No, you know what? The only person on Facebook that's negative is you. And no one's calling you out about it, so you just think the entire world's negative and that you did nothing wrong when actually it is your fault. It is your fault because people need you today, but instead of reaching out, you decide to tell everybody about all the problems that everybody else is having. 
I don't care about everybody else's problems. You know what I care about? I care about your problems. I care about how you're feeling. I care about if you're happy. But you want to know something? I want to know what made you happy. I want to know what makes you tick. I want to know how you feel today. I want to know that you got through a situation to where instead of having to go through a major divorce, you were able to work it out with the other person by apologizing and them apologizing to you. Communication is key on getting through different things. And if you want to get rid of the negativity, you need to start communicating more with people. Okay? Because communication is a key. And you're awesome and you matter. But how are you going to matter to anybody if you close yourself down? How are you going to matter to anybody if you expect everybody to come and tell you, but you won't tell anybody else what's going on in your life? I've had people in my life all the time tell me, Jeff, shut up. Let me talk. Okay. I've had my daughter tell me, Daddy, let me talk. Okay. <laughs> Because I do get carried away and I do let people know everything going on and I do spill my guts and I do do that. But you want to know something? I then listen to other people also. And after a while, there's no more, nothing negative. So now they're telling me about great shows, great movies. They're telling me about the great times they're having. Oh, we used to roller skate down at Scotty's. Oh, we, we got a deer. We, we killed a goose. You know, oh my God, did you hear about what's going on in Soapbox Derby this year? We're putting even more cars in. Next thing you know, the negative's gone and it's only positive. Why? Because they just had to vent. And communication's about both. Remember this. You matter, but you've got to let others know they matter. If you want to, you know, you help enough people get what they want, according to Zig Ziglar, and this one's true, because I've got this in my life too. This is Zig Ziglar. If you help enough people get what they want, you will get what you want, okay? And it's not always about money. It's not always about possession. You, it doesn't always mean you're buying something new or getting a house or getting certain clothing. It's not always about the latest in technology. Sometimes the only thing we want is somebody to listen. Sometimes the only thing we want is somebody to tell us that we are important and that we matter. You know, Sometimes in life, the only thing that matters is we have somebody we know we can shoot our ideas off of. I can tell you this right now. My mentors would probably like to strangle me half the time. Because I'm always shooting out ideas. I'm always going there. But when the places I've gone, the ideas dried up. The places I've gone, they quit talking to each other. And they, all of a sudden, they showed up in person, but they didn't show up in their mind. They need more ideas. They needed more communication. They needed somebody that they could bounce stuff off of. Be a person that people can bounce ideas off of. Be a person that people can trust. Be a person that goes out there and wants to do good by people, okay? And if you are so worried about all the negativity around you, then start getting rid of it. Delete people. Block people. There's even a button on Facebook now where you can take a break from people. Turn it off. You don't got to delete it because what people need you to be positive. They need to see that you're willing to go the extra mile to help them out. The reason why I tell everybody else, I know not everybody's going to be military. I know everybody's not going to be out there looking for jobs, but I'm teaching everybody. You know what? What's better than an application? Do a resume. What's better than that? Go talk to your boss, your manager, your foreman. Go talk to the senior managers and stuff like that to find out what you can do to improve your life where you're at. Okay, you want to make more money than start seeking out people. Quit telling people that things are scams or pyramids and stuff like that because they're not. You're just using it as an excuse because even though you want to make money, you're trying to find a reason not to do it even though you need to do it. And it, guess what? To me, all it is is people that, have, that are ignorant, that are idiots. Now, those aren't bad terms. It's kind of like the word silly. People hear silly and they don't think that much of it. But believe it or not, it just means that you're uneducated in the field that you're trying to discover or think about. What you've got to do is be more open to what's going on out there. Be more open to the people around you. Start basically educating yourself. Start reading 11 good pages of a, of a book a day. Start taking two hours on Sunday to plan your Monday through Saturday. Start basically every day, take 20 minutes every day to take care of yourself or to look at the next thing that you want going in your life or to make more money, to make more jobs, you know, to get a better education, to go to college, go to a vocational school, become a welder, a builder, a carpenter, electrician, a plumber, um, become a Huber driver or a Lyft driver to make extra money. That's fine. Those are all great. Go do it. Those are motivating. But if you sit around saying, oh, shoulda, coulda, woulda, if. Shoulda, coulda, woulda, if. I had a teacher when I was at St. John's Catholic School who later on went over to Baldwin, which is the public school system, went to Catholic school system. Her name is Miss Latour. And she always used to say, I don't want to hear ifs. There's no such thing as ifs in life. Just like there's no such thing as can'ts in life. You can do anything you want. 
It's just you're choosing not to or you're choosing to have excuses on why you won't do it. But if you give me an if question, she literally shot them down every time. She's the only two you ever know. Uh, if, if, if what? So if two, plus, if two plus two equals five, no, no, that's an if question. Two plus two equals four. There's always an answer. Just because we haven't found it yet, there's always an answer. Just like Olympics, you can always break a record. It's just who's willing to go out and work it to break the records. There's always a way to get off the couch. There's always a job out there for somebody. But there's no, yes, there is. There's always a job. It's just you're choosing, picking and choosing what you can take. There used to be an old saying, and I hate this saying more than anybody, anything else, but it, it's an old saying, beggars can't be choosers. Well, there's a lot of correct to that. But the problem is there's so much out there that you're choosing what you want to do and what you don't want to do and if you're not making the big bucks. We're so worried about these college kids coming out of college and they can't find jobs. Why? They don't want to take the lower paying jobs. They don't want to go work in a factory. They don't want to go work as a welder, a carpenter. They want that high pay. Well, we saw what happened with the internet. It burst. The bubble bursted. You know, the tech giants bursted. And now there's not very many jobs in that field. But there's all kinds of jobs making 60, 70, 80, 100 dollars an hour, okay? How about these over the road truck drivers? Well, I don't want to drive truck. Well, why not? You're making between 45 and 55 cents a mile plus bonuses, and if a company's not good, you know what? There's more turnover in the trucking industry than anything else. Why don't you go out to the trucking industry? It's a great money if you have a great score. Want to go open up a business for yourself and start listening to people that have went into business for themselves. Okay, stop thinking you can do everything and start asking for help. Start communicating. Anyway, this has been my 20 minutes. I hope each and every one of you have a great day. Know this, each and every one of you is important. I know the things I say sometimes don't always register in your head or I seem like I'm just full of junk. But here's just it. If you put your mind towards it and you get enough help and you start communicating enough, you can do anything you want to do. There's no such thing as can't. There is a such thing as have to figure it out. I have to problem solve it. And you, my friend, can problem solve anything because you matter. You are important. You want to be a firefighter? Be a hero of a firefighter. Want to be a police officer? Be a hero police officer. Want to be a school teacher? Be a hero school teacher. Want to be a nurse? Be a hero nurse. You want to be a trash collector? Be a hero trash collector. You want to basically work on the river? Be a Go work on the river. Go work at the park service. Go work all this stuff. They're all jobs that have a lot of great backing to it. You just have to go do it. You have to go apply. You have to keep going until you get it. There's no such thing as quit. There's no such thing as can't. And there's no such thing as if. Go out there. Be better today than who you were yesterday. Know you matter every single day. Know that I'm not always going to make sense to everybody. And I understand that. But know this. You're important. And you matter. All right, everybody. I will talk with everybody later. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is the books, so I'm going to get my book ready to go. So I'm going to end this one here, and if you want to listen to the books we're reading, go ahead and listen to the books we're reading. And then i got to pay attention because I have an alternator on my Jeep i got to go have fixed. Every one of you is important. If you ever need anything, just call and ask. I'm, even my worst enemies I'm willing to talk to. I know people lie, cheat, steal, exaggerate on stuff, but you want to know something? Forgive them. Forgive the people that have done you wrong. Ask forgiveness from the people you've done wrong. And then forgive yourself because each and every one of you is important. And if you want to know what communication is, go back in this video and watch it when I push it, put it on Facebook because communication is the key to anything. I understand that I work all the time and I got my daughter and it's hard for me to do things outside of what I'm used to. But I, even I know I have to break down what I have to do. But I do know that I'm important. And I do know the people out there are not going to reach out to you that you have to befriend them first before they'll ever reach out to you to let you know what's going on. Because the world is a great place. You just have to open your eyes and see it. Anyway, my name is Jeffrey Jansen, everybody. I will look forward to talking to each and every one of you later. Know this, you matter. Everything you do in life matters. It doesn't matter where you're at in life. You could be cleaning toilets for a living so the Virgin Mary herself will come sit on that toilet. But it matters that you cleaned it. It matters what you do. It matters that you're a truck driver. It matters you're a Marine. It matters all those jobs out there. There's no such thing as a job that's bad. There's jobs that are hard, but there's no such thing as a bad job. There's no such thing as doing something wrong for the right reasons, unless it's abuse or neglect or drama or negativity. Then you got to get rid of it. But it's all about you. You need to forgive yourself first. You need to ask forgiveness, and you need to start learning to forgive those people in your life. 
Quit trying to take everybody to court. Try, quit trying to make people mad. Quit trying to have vengeance. Forgive and forget and move on. And if people don't want to forget and they don't want to forgive, you still get to move on from them because at least you forgave yourself. Anyway, my name is Jeff Jansen, everybody. Hope you guys have a great day. God bless, and I'll talk to everybody later. Bye now.